Welcome back to this episode of Health Reversion. You're here with Adrian. And in this episode, we're gonna be having a look at vitamin C, what it is, signs of toxicity, signs of deficiency, the highest whole food sources, so not supplements, but whole food sources, and make sure you stay through to the end where I give some tips around cooking and preparation. Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin and it's needed for a whole range of processes throughout the body. The following are just some of the processes. Vitamin C is needed to help heal wounds, infections and burns. So without the adequate levels of vitamin C, these particular issues may go on for longer than needed. Vitamin C also enhances the immune system, so it really drives the immune system. And it's also really important if you are on a vegan or vegetarian diet because it helps with the absorption of the plant-based forms of iron. And finally, it helps to strengthen blood vessels and it's a key requirement for the formation of collagen within the body, which is an amino acid or protein, which is essential for healthy skin, bones, cartilage, teeth and gums. The recommended dietary intakes or recommended daily allowances or daily values, it varies depending on where you are in the world. They range from a lower level for somebody that's stress-free, having a garden variety life, up to a, a higher level or an upper intake for somebody that is experiencing significant emotional or physical stress or a breastfeeding woman. So in this case, for a garden variety life, you're looking at around the 60 milligram level. That's what's recommended to have each day. For someone under significant stress, or well that's breastfeeding, you're looking up to 120 milligrams a day. Now the following foods that I'm gonna discuss, which are whole foods, this will be based on the 60 milligram mark. So that what I'm about to show you all contain 60 milligrams. So each of the serving sizes, and I've got videos and demonstrations for you coming up now. The first example is half a cup or 75 grams of yellow, green, or red peppers. Sometimes they're called capsicums. This will meet or exceed the recommended daily intake. And I've got yellow here because yellow is the highest vitamin C content out of all of the pet peppers or capsicum. Next up, we have half a cup or 119 milliliters of orange juice. It doesn't necessarily need to be orange juice. You could just have the oranges. And in this case, it took me one and a half oranges to get that 119 milliliters. Next up, we have half a cup or 90 grams of kiwi fruit. If you're more of a vegetable person, then having half a cup or 78 grams of cooked broccoli, so lightly steamed would be the, the go. And the other vegetable option that I've got today is half a cup or 81 grams of Brussels sprouts. I know they're not for everybody, but these whole foods that I've just mentioned are the highest containing levels or have the highest containing levels, I should say, of vitamin C. So the natural whole vitamin C. In relation to toxicity, if you have too much vitamin C in one sitting, you may experience symptoms such as a sore stomach, nausea, vomiting, and even diarrhea. This can usually only be achieved through supplements and through the artificial source of vitamin C, otherwise known as ascorbic acid. There's references included in this video and several of those references have stated that the maximum amount that the body can absorb in one sitting is around about the 200 milligram mark. So if you are wanting to high dose with vitamin C, if you believe that there's a protocol out there that's suggesting that there's health benefits and that this is the thing for you, then if you're going to have 500 or 1,000 milligrams a day, just consider having them spaced throughout the day. 
When a deficiency occurs, you may experience a reduction in your immune function, so you'll be more susceptible to colds and flus, and poor wound healing and poor tissue growth. We're at the tail end of the video now, where we're gonna look at the cooking and preparation. Now, what you must know is that vitamin C is affected by heat. Therefore, fresh, and in the case of the, the capsicum or the bell peppers uh, and the orange juice, you're also looking at, at having those raw. So this is particularly important with relation to the orange juice. If you are going to opt to get your vitamin C from orange juice, that's wonderful, but it needs to be freshly squeezed. Now that takes a lot of time and it can be very expensive to get a juicer. And if that's not the position that you're in, as I mentioned before, one and a half standard oranges is gonna get you that particular recommended dietary allowance or dietary intake. So you don't necessarily need to make orange juice. You could just have the orange and you'll be consuming the fiber, etc., with that orange. Now, why is this important? Because you might be thinking, Adrian, I can just go to the supermarket and I can buy two liters of orange juice for $5 or $6 and I can have way more than the recommended dietary intake and I can be really healthy. And I used to think that way as well. But some people know this and some people don't. Now, if you don't know, pretty much every juice, so every bottled juice in a supermarket due to regulations around health has been pasteurized. I'm not getting this confused with milk. Milk has got it written on the bottle explicitly that this product is pasteurized and no milk can be sold in a commercial supermarket without being pasteurized. But with the juices, it doesn't actually explicitly state that. And when I've rung around to the manufacturers, they've actually been quite honest with me and they've said, yes, we have to follow um, the regulations in the, the various countries and each of the products needs to be pasteurized. Now, given that vitamin C is affected by high heat, uh, this is something to please keep in mind that buying that store-bought orange juice, a lot of the time it's, it's been denatured, the enzymes have been killed during the pasteurization process and there might not actually be a great deal of vitamin C left. So you probably would have to drink a huge amount of store-bought orange juice to get the vitamin C content that you would from just a freshly squeezed one and a half to two oranges. And the absolute final cooking tip here with relation to broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Now I know they're not for everybody, but if you are going to look at these options, but perhaps for dinner and you think, yeah, I can do a half a cup of broccoli, half a cup of Brussels sprouts, I can incorporate that. In regards to cooking, you've got your options. You can obviously do the, the boiling, you could do the microwaving, or you could do the steaming, baking as well. But the research that I've come across has suggested that up to 50% of the vitamin C content is lost during boiling, around about 25% with microwaving, but only 12 to 15% with steaming. So if you're going to look at having your vegetables cooked, and for me personally, I always like to have my vegetables lightly steamed. I don't do too well with raw vegetables. So I will lightly steam my Brussels sprouts, my broccoli, and that way I know that I'm maintaining the vitamin C content and the nutrients as much as possible. Thanks for watching through to the end. If you got something out of this video, please give me a hand and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and also keep a lookout for the upcoming videos on the B vitamin range. This is something that has really taken me by surprise as just to how important they are for energy production and to ensuring that a whole range of enzymes and processes within the body can function and do their job with those B vitamins. So stay tuned for those upcoming episodes. In the meantime, keep well.